we started this fund, this customizable private equity real estate fund to our investors, this flexibility to invest, but also to have like a single, you know, one-stop shop for all the paperwork, such as the private placement memorandum, the portal to access your investments, as well as your tax returns and offer our diversification. Are you about to start a podcast or producing a podcast and tired of doing the editing yourself? We have produced over 1,000 daily shows, and the production team I've created called Vox Valens Media is now available to produce shows for you as well. We can do as little or much as you need from finding and communicating with guests, preparing introductions, to editing the audio and video. You will sound better, have a more professional presence, and be able to spend your time doing more valuable tasks in your business. Let me know if you're interested by emailing me directly at whitney at lifebridgecapital.com. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, we have back our guest, Philippe Shulligan. You know, over 2,400 plus units, $140 million portfolio. He's he's contributed to help raising over $29 million from investors. So we are going to dive in uh, more about syndication and some details that whether you're active or passive, whether you're interested in a multi-asset fund or single asset fund, we're going to cover that over the next day or so. Philippe, welcome back to the show. Honored to have you on again and just grateful for your time and sharing and everything you've learned from getting into this space from single family turnkey to syndication, 80 unit deal, 180 unit deal. And man, you've just kept going in the syndication business and learning and now helping us to understand the syndication business even even better, whether active or passive. I hope you've listened to the last two shows with Philippe as he's dove into the syndication business and structures and questions you need to ask as an LP and all these things that are, man, I wish I had known, you know, years ago as well. And But today I want to dive into a fund, right? What is a fund? You know, Philippe has started a fund and or has a fund and I wanted to dive into, you know, what led him to start a fund, right? It's this big topic. I hear so many questions about in our industry. We've had a fund. I hear, you know, other people have funds. Sometimes they're multi-asset, sometimes they're single asset, sometimes they're even something a lot different than even that. So let's dive in. Philippe, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Whitney. Glad to be back. Yeah, thank you. Let's dive into what led you to start a fund. So that's a good question. Thank you for asking. We decided to create a fund because I think it's a matter, and just to step back for a minute, a fund, you know, I think you have to think about it as a super syndication, right? Meaning instead of, you know, one syndication being for one asset, you know, in a fund, you can have multiple assets and you can invest in different ways into different assets. And I think that's what is the power of the fund is going to offer you diversification as an investor. But there are different types of funds. You know, I think they could be a blind fund, meaning that, you know, you're going to really 100% let the sponsors of that fund, you know, pick the assets for you. You know, they will obviously outline the uh, characteristics of what assets they're going to pick, but you really not, don't have control. You know, what we decided to do is to do a customizable fund, which allowed investors to pick and choose within the fund what assets they want to invest in. So now, you know, we started this fund, this customizable private equity real estate fund to our investors, this flexibility to invest, but also to have like a single, you know, one-stop shop for all the paperwork, such as the private placement memorandum, the portal to access your investments, as well as your tax returns and offer our diversification. And now we come ourselves, you know, as typically as co-general partner in deals, and we're going to partner with different sponsors who are experts in different markets. And so, you know, the investors can trust our experience and background and uh, past successes in selecting the best sponsors in different markets and bringing deals that we vetted, you know, from sponsors that we vetted as well. So that's why, you know, we did the fund. Also, having a fund, it gives us the flexibility and it's more I would say technical and, and on the sponsor side, but to come into a deal as a general partner or co-general partner, we can also come as limited partner or JV partner. So, and it's more like a, really on the structure side and how the different partners come together. And in some cases, really like the very experienced sponsors 
they don't necessarily give a lot of option. And we're going to come as a fund and say, look, you know, we can bring so much capital in your deal, you know, give us better terms that we can pass to our investors. That's how we approach the discussion with the sponsor at that point, you know, to bring value to the investors as well as getting better terms from the sponsor and very experienced sponsors who may not offer the ability for other people to partner with them except through a, a limited partnership. Yeah, I appreciate you elaborating on this type of fund and you call it a customizable you know, private equity fund. Or you mentioned like investors get to pick and choose the deals they want to invest in. Can you just walk through that process a little bit and you know, how do they do that? Yeah, so we have a portal and so investors can sign up and so it's a 506C fund that we created. So it's for accredited investors only. But once they sign up and we review that, you know, they fill their application and we verify that they are accredited, they have access to our offerings. And, you know, fund, we're going to, you know, every few months, you know, it could be three to six months, we'll add a new deal into the fund. And then, you know, the investor can decide, yes, I'm going to pick that fund so they can review the specifics of the deal, the returns, the market, and, you know, we'll do a little presentation about that, that specific deal, like a traditional syndication. And, you know, if the returns profile and the deal profile fits the investor's requirements, they can select that investment to be part of where they deploy money. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, for them, it's very similar to investing in separate syndications, except, you know, it's like a one-stop shop. So they would deploy money into, let's say they decide they would send money to the fund on deal by deal case. You know, they're not sending like a big check that is sitting there. So they would say, okay, you know, I want to invest 50,000 in this deal. And then there's a new deal coming up that they like. So they can send another 50,000 to the fund. And then when the deal is going to close, I mean, you know, be disposed of, Either they dis- they can take the funds out or, you know, there will be a, by that time another opportunity for them to invest in a new deal, right? And it's the same thing for their distributions. You know, we're going to offer in the fund like debt opportunities, for instance, right? So it will be like a super savings account where they can just make their returns, their distributions sit there and, and collect even more money. So yeah, we think we have a good customizable private equity real estate fund. It's a good solution for investors to be able to diversify their investments and build a relationship with one team, rely on us to vet, you know, separate deals, separate sponsors on their behalf. You know, we've done, what, almost 1,500 episodes, and I don't think we've talked about like a, a customizable fund like this. I don't know, maybe once or twice before, you know, so it's, I like this model though. I like how it's a multi-asset fund and, you know, it does give the investor, like you mentioned, the option to invest again in that fund, but on a deal by deal basis. It's So it's, it's kind of like a blend almost of a multi-asset fund and a single asset fund. It's interesting how the investors have that option on a deal by deal basis, but it's the same fund. And so I like that. And they get to determine their their risk tolerance for each deal individually, right? You know, in this big fund. So it's an interesting model. We've not looked into that specific kind of fund, but I want to, I want to learn more about that and how that functions a little bit. Are you able to manage all that through an investor portal? Is that something that a, like a portal can handle as far as, you know, those decisions that investors are making on a per deal basis in a large fund like that as well? Yes, yes. We have a partner, you know, who made these capabilities available to us. So we're working with them. We have our fund is hosted by that partner. And, you know, you have all the features, you know, the back office features that allow, you know, for the individual investors to invest in individual deals and to, you know, for the distributions to be sent in the right places. And actually, we also have another feature in the fund, you know, because with my partner, we're going in some cases to pre-fund the particular investment. So again, for us, it's one of the tools we have to work with different sponsors and say, you know, for instance, my partner and I, we have half a million dollars in, in the fund and we'll knock at a sponsor door and say, look, you know, we can deploy this half million dollar that is in our fund tomorrow, you know, the idea we, we pre-fund it with my partner 
And we're going to backfill this position with investors' money down the road. But, you know, what kind of terms do you give us? You know, we come very strong to, you know, at the negotiation table to ask for better terms. And, you know, we're not coming with, oh, we think we can bring such and such money to the table. Or we think, you know, we can find investors and uh, fund in, you know, in 30 days. It's like, you know, we agree on the terms and we can wire the money tomorrow. So, you know, again, you have a lot of flexibility with our fund, a lot of tools to be able to negotiate the best terms possible for our investors. Awesome. Philippe, we're going to re- go into a few final questions as we close this segment out. And I want to ask you, what's your best source for meeting new investors right now? Well, so, you know, we recently started our new company, Boost Capital Group, when, I, you know, my partner, Jeff Rodriguez, and I came together. So we launched earlier this year. And, you know, right now, the best source is, you know, one of the things I'm not less comfortable doing, you know, I don't know if it's a generational thing or, or something else, but it's like posting on social media. So, you know, we decided with my partner, you know, we really want to have like a thought leadership platform. You know, we want to spread the word and post on social media and get people to know us through that mean, share information and education with people who might be interested. And that's how we're here. You know, we spread the world and people get interested, you know, and it could be a podcast appearance like doing right now. And people get back to us and say, oh, you know, I, I like what I hear when I see you. And I think that's probably, you know, a strong source for us of new investors. But otherwise, there's the traditional, you know, meetups and conferences, real estate conferences and other, you know, networking groups, etc. What are some daily habits that you are disciplined about that have produced the highest return for you? You know, on daily habits, you know, I'm glad to share that, you know, when I started to do real estate full time, you know, I quit my W-2, I started to exercise more consistently. And I think that was very good for my body. And, you know, I like to take like brisk walks and I, you know, I listen to audiobooks and I think about it as well. And actually, you know, sometimes my mind wanders when, when I'm taking these walks and, you know, I have like get ideas of how to resolve some issues. And I think it serves that a little bit, you know, it's, it's both physical exercise as well as a mental, you know, some kind of meditation, I think to some extent. And, you know, I think it's a very, very strong, you know, habit that I took a few years ago. I'm very glad I started. What about the number one thing that you would say has contributed to your success? I think it's two things, I would say, consistency and perseverance. You know, consistency, you know, define what you, and that's why I keep saying to my students, my mentoring students, you know, define your criteria, you know, and discuss with a mentor, you know, what you're looking for, for instance, you know, and whatever, and I'm, you know, taking real estate as an example, but it could be in in any business that you want to start, you know, define your goals, define your criteria of what you're looking for and keep focusing on that, you know, become an expert on, you know, maybe it's a market in real estate. It's a hundred plus units in Atlanta where I live, for instance, and become the expert, you know, when you have seen enough of those deals, you'll be an expert eventually. And you'll see that particular deal that is, you know, like a good deal, you know, or the best deal you've seen so far. And that's the deal you should make your best effort to get under contract. You know, and myself, I suffered of, you know, shiny object syndrome, right? Or like the dog with the scroll, you know, always looking at something else. Like f- focus and consistency is very important. And then, you know, perseverance, because, I mean, it will take tens, hundreds of deals for you to review until you find a deal that will fit. So you have to be patient, you know, keep at it. And, you know, eventually you'll find an opportunity. Now, even you talking about that, you know, one of the worst real estate deals, you know, what happened with you, you know, you didn't stop there, right? You didn't quit. You persevered and you know, the next one. And if you hadn't, man, what a loss it would have been, right? But you, you persevered and you kept going. And so tell us, how do you like to give back? Well, I think, you know, currently the most significant way I give back is through my mentoring. You know, I mentor new entrepreneurs who are starting in multifamily business. And, you know, I have several students any given time and I'm helping them, you know, through the ropes. And, you know, I'm telling them, you know, be consistent and persevere, you know, define your market, your criteria and, you know, how to avoid mistakes. You know, I think that's the most exciting way for me to give back to investor community and entrepreneur community as well. 
Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you and have you on the show. You've provided a ton of value over the last three segments to the listeners and myself. I'm grateful. Tell the listeners again how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yes. So they can reach out to me at my first name, Philippe, P-H-I-L-I-P-P-E at boostmycapital.com. That's my email address. They can also take a look at our website, boostmycapital.com. And on the website, they can download five ways to invest your retirement money when we're comparing the stock market and real estate and other investment opportunities as well, if they want to know more about us. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope you have liked and subscribed to the show. Please tell your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show. And I hope that you are learning and growing. Don't forget to go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing today.